a very good a very good evening sorry a very good evening and welcome to uae's biggest classroom my teacher season 2 so as we all know we have got our motivation speaker sankeet ibrahim sir who is a vice president president of sharja islamic bank and team leader of dubai quality award so as we all know he is quite active with all the schools and teachers and he's been with us with our ntv since season 1 so let's welcome sankeet sir to our program my teacher Good evening and a very warm welcome to this amazing program called My Teacher on NTV. I'm Sangeet Ibrahim and I'm extremely happy to be back with the NTV family and as always I hope you'll watch this program along with your full family. Now, what are we going to discuss today? When we ask parents this question, what is the purpose of your life? We invariably get the same answer. we live for our children our fears our aspirations our dreams our pain our struggle and our tears are for our children so our little ones please note regardless of where i ask this question it could be in a posh villa or it could be inside the label camp but everybody says we live for our children and in return we expect our children to reciprocate for all this love and affection by taking an active part in class by listening well by taking ownership for the learning by studying hard for the examinations and by scoring well high academic grades in the exams and we also compare them always with their cousins with the children of our neighbors and with the children of our friends but in that process unfortunately knowingly or unknowingly we might be putting some excess pressure on our children a little bit of pressure is fine but when we start exerting excess pressure sometimes like a rubber band our children snap and ouch it hurts everyone in the process just a few months back my dear viewers all of us came to know of the unfortunate incident of a student committing suicide just because he was not able to handle the anxiety of his performance in the examination now isn't that sad because this young boy should have grown up to become an amazing human being a great father a great son an awesome husband but he decided to take his life and i'm just wondering what is it that we did you and me his teachers his parents his friends what did we do to make him believe that there's no way out now unfortunately while we speak this might be happening within our own homes our children might be feeling excess pressure what can we do to run up to them what can we do to hold them close to our hearts and to bring them back into a life of happiness and success this is what we are going to discuss today are we exerting excess pressure on our students now i've got some very special dignitaries in our studio today who will join me after the break we'll have mr s j jacob who is the principal of alamir english school ajman and also the recipient of the president's award the president's award for the best teacher and we also have ms piali gupta who is a student counselor who works at our own english high school sharja the girls branch and who has got on 10 years of experience uh, helping parents and students tied challenges so they'll join me after the break but before that right now before our first break we'll get to hear three different perspectives on this topic the first perspective is of course from the parents from the mothers okay so while doing research for this program i spoke to uh, a lot of parents and most of them said a whopping 86% of them said that yes schools and the academic system is putting excess pressure on our children so what we have to do is let's speak to them let's speak to one parent who is uh, extremely vocal and extremely passionate and ask her this question 
Uh, this person is Ms. Rina Matthew. Uh, she works at the Emirates Institute of Banking and Financial Studies, and uh, she has got a lot of experience in organizing learning and development programs for the community. So let's speak to uh, Rina. Uh, studio, can we connect uh, Ms. Rina Matthew, please? Good evening, Sandeep Ji. Good evening, Rina. Uh, a very warm welcome to the program, and thank you for joining us on air. Now, uh, uh, our pleasure, our pleasure, Rina. If I request you to answer in one word, okay, yes or no, yes. let me ask you the question. Do you think the schooling system is putting excess pressure on our students? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you're very sure about that, is it? That's an emphatic yes. Of course. Okay. <laughs> I'm 100% sure about it. <laughs> and you believe, yes, that they're putting excess pressure. Okay. Now, if I may ask you, uh, Rina. To, to say three things that schools can do, that teachers and schools can do to handle, to help our students handle this pressure well, what would you say? What are the three things that schools and teachers can do to help our students manage this pressure better? Okay, as well, I think the school should get better trained teachers who can make the subject interesting for children. Okay. And the schools make sure that, that the children learn and understand what is in the class. Okay as we parents have no control on what happens in the school. Great, okay. And yeah, and the school should support the weak kids by giving them an extra coaching on the subject. Oh, that's nice. I think, I think Rina's points can be summarized as follows. The school should, should take extra care to make sure that weak students, everybody is not on par. They have to make sure that weak students understand the topics better. And they should also be more proactive inside the classroom because we parents don't know what's happening inside the classroom. So they have to make sure that students actually listen, understand and come home with a reasonable awareness of what the topic is about. I think that's what you wanted to say, right? That's right. Great. Thank you, Rina. Thanks a lot for your points. And uh, we hope you'll join us on air again in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that was Rina Matthew from the Emirates Institute of Banking and Financial Studies. As part of the research for the same uh, episode, we also spoke to students and a very interesting angle came up. Students were really performing well, scoring A plus grades. They said, well, pressure, of course we feel some pressure, but that pressure is manageable, but it's, it's, it's never pressure that's unmanageable. And, and these are the students who are doing well, Plus, they take, care, they, they take part in extracurricular activities, they take part in sports, they represent the school. For competitions, they win awards. But those students who were not really performing well, parents, please note, they are the ones who said that they feel excess pressure. So now that was quite interesting. It should be the other way around. So now we'll have our second speaker joining us in the studio. His name is Vaishak Satish. Vaishak Satish is a student at uh, DPS Sharjah. And he's also the proud recipient of the Sheikh Hamdan Award, the biggest honor that a student can get uh, uh, in this part of the world. So let's have Vaishag on air with us. Vaishag, are you with us? Yes, I am. Great. Thank you for joining us on air, Vaishag. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, yeah, now, ple my pleasure too. <laughs> sure. Now, this is not just about you. We're speaking about the student community in general. One question, Vaishag. Do you feel excess pressure? Do you feel the schooling system is exerting excess pressure on you? Uh, honestly, no. Oh, really? But, uh, <laughs> okay, now that, that's... The answer a... would have... Actually, that answer would have uh, two points to it. Okay. Uh, it's all on how a student uh, sees the schooling system as. Okay. If the student you know, uh, is not really trying... Uh, putting his hundred percent into it. Okay. Then he will obviously feel extra pressure. Okay. But if the student is actually putting all his hundred percent, his focus, his determination, okay, and his talent into what he has to do, into scoring marks or okay. into exams, okay, then then the stress will decrease. Oh. And oh. stress is a positive factor. Stress is required. Okay, okay. That, that's an interesting angle and you feel stress is required because it motivates you, it, 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 adrenaline rush within you and you perform better when you are stressed to, to, a, to, a, to a medium degree. But what you are yeah. saying is that if students take the responsibility for the learning and if they put their heart and soul into it, then the stress can be managed. This is what you are saying. That's exactly what I am coming to. 
Okay, but, but why do some people excessively feel pressure? Is that because probably they don't listen in class and they don't take an active interest in studying? That could be uh, one of the reasons. Okay. Also, maybe they are not motivated enough. They don't have the uh, desire to score high marks. Okay. Or you know, uh, they might be in the wrong crowd, or you know, peer pressure. True, true, true. Probably working, All those factors. moving around in a crowd where studying is not really valued, and probably they don't have that inner drive to achieve. Thank you, Vaishu. That's yeah. a very interesting perspective. Uh, parents, please note this is an award winner, somebody who's doing excessively well, and he says that pressure is good. And if students take responsibility of their own learning, they can manage that pressure. Thank you, Vaishu. Thank you for joining us online. Now, now, now that was another perspective. The first caller, the, the mother said, schools will have to do much more. But now when we spoke to an award-winning student, he says that students must do much more. So now let's balance these perspectives. I'll have a, a third uh, uh, subject matter expert joining me on air in the studio. Her name is Sunana Iqbal. She has been working with students for a teen number of years and she has recently completed her PhD on the topic academic success of, uh, of, of students in the, in the Middle East, of CBSE students in the Middle East. So uh, let's ask her, uh, you know, is it about parents, is it about teachers or is it about students themselves? So Sunana, are you, are you on air with us? Hi Sangeet. Hi, hi Sunana, a very warm welcome to our program. Thank you. Uh, uh, Sunana, uh, 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 a simple question to you. Why do some students find it hard to learn? Everybody is not equal, of course, but why do some students find it excessively hard to learn and perform well? Well, uh, I would say there are two main reasons here. One could be the lack of willingness on the student's part, and the second could be the lack of skill. The lack of willingness and the lack of skill. Can you, can you elaborate a bit more for us? Most definitely. Lack of willingness on the student's part to put in effort. Here, we can't blame the students completely because they are being made aware of only the pains involved and not the pleasures. Okay. So they find this learning process very arduous and tiring. Okay. Now, this can be solved to an extent through goal-setting trainings, wherein, the, wherein these children would be taken through setting goals uh, breaking these goals into simpler and easier and immediate tasks and then laying down a course of action to achieve these goals. Oh, so what you're saying is it's not just enough to send them to school and then uh, to admonish them if they score poorly in examinations. We parents and teachers must take an active role in motivating these students, giving them a reason to learn and perform. Well, that's Absolutely. interesting. Thank you. Now, what about the second part? You said something about the ability to learn. Can you elaborate on that? Yes. See, Sangeet, we, we all know that no two children are the same in terms of the skills they possess. Okay. Now, learning is a skill which every child would not be born with. Okay. In case a child is not born with it, we need to develop it. Okay. So, um, every individual has multiple intelligences. Mm -hmm. We need to identify them and mm -hmm. use them to our advantage in making learning easier and more pleasurable for the child. Okay. Say, for example, um, a child with interpersonal intelligence, yeah, he would learn better through group discussions. Okay. While a child with a musical intelligence would learn better if he can apply music and rhythm in learning. Okay, okay. That's Similarly, there are different learning styles involved. Yeah, okay. a child with um, a kinesthetic learning style will have to move around while learning. Okay. A child with a, a visual learning style would, would require more uh, visual aids such as diagrams and presentations and graphs for learning. Okay. So if we can identify these and help him apply his learning style to the best of his advantage, okay. then learning becomes a pleasure for them. Oh, I would suggest that uh, they undergo trainings in uh, accelerated learning technique, goal setting, and uh, maybe speed reading as well. Now, what is speed reading? Here, yeah, speed reading increases the reading speed of the child three times. Wow, that's amazing. That's a, that's a completely different perspective. Parents, please note, you just cannot compare children. Some of them are just like the ability to draw, the ability to sing. Some kids inherently have the ability to learn better, to remember better, to apply better. So all apples are not the same. Sometimes it could be apples and oranges. 
So please do remember this term, accelerated learning, uh, speed reading. Make sure that our kids are empowered with these skills, which will equip them to, to perform well. Otherwise, it would be sad. You don't motivate them. You don't give them the necessary skills. And when they perform poorly, we start putting excessive pressure on them. So Nana, thank you for joining us uh, on air. It's and an uh, thank and you. looking forward to having you again. Uh, uh, dear viewers, I think we heard three different perspectives today. Parents who said uh, the school has the responsibility and, and students who said, well, it's up to us to really uh, take the efforts to heart. And an expert who says that we parents must really equip our children with the necessary skills and motivate them before complaining about their lack of performance. So it's now time to take our first break. And as I promised, We'll have our two subject matter experts in the studio after the break. We'll have Mr. S.J. Jacob, the winner of the President's Award for the Best Teacher, and uh, Ms. Piali Gupta, who's a student counselor working at our own English school. And we'll specifically ask them questions on what the school can do and what the parents can do to help our children manage pressure better. So we'll meet you on the other side of the break. Please don't go away. We promise you a very interesting and knowledgeable session coming up next.